Sure. Welcome in, everybody. Glad to have you here. Hope everyone is staying cool, whoever is getting hit that heat wave, because even here in parts of California, it's getting hot this week, or last, last week and weekend and a little bit this week, so hope everyone's good. Viral FedEx. Yeah, did you, uh, did you swing some risky hopefully calls i think i think it shut up right hopefully july nice nice move nice move manu 
well, this class is for you and well, the 20 other people in here. Um, yeah, this is a thing that uh, I think is super, super important. Um, I think newer beginning traders um, struggle with it because it's the emotion of money. But I promise you and I can tell you and whoever's listening, whenever it clicks like mentally, the mental side of it, like it's, it just, I'm not gonna say trading's easy, but your, your entries will be so spot on. Um, uh, your girl, um, can you not hear, can anyone hear me? Yes, no, maybe. Or is it just, okay, so maybe check your audio settings, make sure you don't have anything plugged in on a, laptop or iPad, but as I was saying, you guys, once once you start getting better with entries um, and, and building a trade plan day after day, every single entry, every single time, like you will look at your past losses and, met, and you're literally gonna say to yourself, man, why, why did I struggle with this? And so, you know, you've heard me say it in my lectures many, many times, like I enter trades where, you know, I only, I day trade 99% of the time, I rarely swing, but referring to day trades, it's like, when I'm, when I'm wrong and it goes against me, there's no, I mean, yeah, I'm not happy. I lost money, but there's no like second guessing. Oh, should I average down? Should I throw more in? Should I, you know, should I over leverage? It's like when, when a play goes against me, it's, it's very obvious. And I'm not saying that cause I'm bragging. I'm just saying I, I found a system that works for me and I just do it over and over and over. And I literally just take, you know, the, the few people I kind of trade with in here, it's like I trade, literally one to two, maybe three trades a day, and that's it. Um, and I'll kind of go over some of my strategies as well. Like I said, it's not that mine is the only one that works, but it's what works for me. But mainly, um, I want to go over a few things, um, obviously, on here and in here. And then hopefully there's some time at the end if you guys are brave enough um, or not even brave enough. But hopefully you guys, you know, let me know what trade you took. And if you took a loss, you know, maybe we can go over it together. But, um, or if it's a winner, that's great too. But I want to, I want to hear about a trade plan. I don't want to hear, oh, I took spy calls. I sold 110%. That's cool. That's great. But that tells me nothing. And so be ready to have a trade plan built. You're entering exit points. If you do want to share a chart, whether it's a winner or loser, if it's a loser, we can definitely go over, Hey, maybe, you know, you could have entered here differently or done this differently. Obviously I can see the chart afterwards. It's in hindsight, but I'll try and have a very neutral opinion on it. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, Adam, the biggest, that, that is the biggest thing here, man. That is the biggest, um, my, my largest improvement, probably the last six to 10 months, I would say six to eight months is, you know, strict, strict entry size, strict stop losses, but that stop loss is based on a level. Like you kind of mentioned in your comments and it's like, it's not. I'm willing to lose 500 bucks on this trade. No, I'm willing to lose wherever this chart tells me that I'm losing money. And same with taking profits. It's like, I tell people, if, you, or if you've been in these classes before, I try and have one to three. You know, obviously a minimum of one and that first price target, it needs to be bigger than your stop. You can't say, oh, my hard stop is 30% every time and I'm taking profit 10%. Well, it's like, you're going to take those 30% hits, your port's going to go down. And then you take two winners, 10%, 10%, and your next loss is 30%, and your port will just forever trickle down. And so, um, you know, that is the mindset of using the chart. And again, I'll show you guys ways you can do it on pretty much any broker, just maybe not Robinhood. Um, but yes. Well, let's get started, guys. Um, why entry matters and why time matters and how that will vary, because I'm going to show you, I'm going to try and get through all three examples. I don't want to go too fast, but I also know I kind of ramble and things go a bit long. So entry and the time on your contract days to expiration, it's going to vary on your scalping, your day trading, and your swings. And I'm kind of show you why and trying to get you guys in the mindset of, you know, why that varies. I mean, when I show you, you're like, well, duh, but it's, it's a matter of doing it again, day after day, building a habit, you know, building discipline in the market, because the market does not care if you're on a 13 day win streak, 13 day losing streak, it's going to do it at once. And you just need to follow the money best you can, you know, and try and make as much money as you can along the way. Um, and so, so yeah, how to avoid stopped out. 
Um, I was talking with another member. I think they're actually in here. They gave me permission to go over their traits. So I kind of want to do that as well towards the end. Um, literally this, he had a trade plan. He entered, it stopped him out and it made the move. He bought that bottom on the spy. Uh, I'm not, I'm not even going to say that the stop was too tight because his stop to me did make sense. But I think because there's a zero DTE, that's where obviously in hindsight, I can say maybe not wrong, but maybe by a little bit of time and that play would have worked for him. Um, but again, you know, he had a trade plan. He, he's getting really good at sending me trade plans. Like I always tell people, send me or someone your trade plan and, and hold yourself to it because it makes you a better trade. And that's what he did. And then he messaged me back, said I got stopped out. And that's cool. We talked about it. Um, and that was that. But with that, guys, um, I'm going to dive in here. I don't have a ton of slides. It's more a little bit of talking, a lot of charts. So hopefully that's beneficial to you guys. Where do I sell? How do I know uh, where the price might go? Um, someone tell me in the chat why price targets and stop losses vary. Um, it may seem like an obvious question, but I kind of want to get your brains going a little bit in the chat. You know, if I scalp with a zero DTE or a day trade or a swing with 30 days, you know, tell me, you know, stop losses and price targets, why, why would those vary? Um, and again, for anybody that's know or new, DTE is days till expiration, meaning when the contract expires. Anybody in the chat, why will a price target vary on a scalp? that ends in 30 minutes, you know, SPX versus a swing with time. Your girl says you made more, you need, you may need more time for the move. I like that. Anybody else? Anybody, anybody, anybody? No? Nobody? Nobody guys? Theta, Sam, nice, love it. That was one of my notes here, time decay, contract selection time. All right, we'll move on. All right, at least you guys are kind of figuring out where I'm going with this, okay? Open interest, Jose, that could be it. Um, do you think later you can discuss closing to early? Yep, definitely. Depends on your trade plan, yep. Okay, where do I sell? Let's go over some charts here. I'm gonna dive in quickly, like I said. Um, I got some notes here. Let me check them really quick on what I wanna go over. This is the SPY price action from today. I'm gonna to go over um, theoretical. I didn't take any of these. I'm just going over theoretical trade plans. Um, I wanna focus on this big up candle here. It's not green for me because I like white and blue because I'm weird, but this big candle here, I'm gonna focus on this. And the first trade we're gonna look at you guys is the mindset of a zero TT scalp. This is SPY. This is what you guys mostly play every single day. It's what you guys like. Um, so let's focus on that. So. Um, before I can even go over this, what do we need to do, you guys? What do we need to do? You know, I got a, I got a blank chart right here. What do we need to do before I even think about getting a, in this trade? Because I have no idea. Is this a good level here? I mean, I hinted that it was, but why is it a good level? Yep, let's put some levels on the chart, you guys. We're newly fresh up here, SPY all-time highs. I kept this 546 up here because I think it's very, very important. But for this trade... Ignore this big arrow for now. It's going to go back um, to where it was. But for me, you guys, if you know me and you know my trade plans and how I trade, I start everything usually on the four hour, the one. But for time's sake, we are on the one hour time frame right now. And I'm looking for key levels, you guys. I don't need to mark every single candle, every single candle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark some key levels here. You guys, I'm going to mark three or four that I know that I like already by looking at this. And then we go down the five minute. I'm going to show you, wow. Look how it lines up. You know, it's gonna maybe maybe be a light bulb moment for you guys to start and focus on your larger time frames and build off from that. So this is spy the last uh, four or five six trading days, and if you know me, I like to find where price price kind of moves in and out in and out of movements. And so for me, some levels here are pretty I can say easy, but they're pretty obvious to me. So we push up. We come down here last week, we bounce. So I'm looking, I'm looking in this area of interest here, we push up and we bounce. Okay, we come down, we sell. And now I said we push, we bounce. And now we're coming to this area. Now we're seeing rejections. And now we're seeing rejections. So for me, this is what I would call a, a fairly obvious 
line right here. And same thing. Where is price moving? Where is it bouncing? Where is it rejecting? What makes sense? Um, another one here, it's pretty much 544 flat. And why I like this and why I picked this, even on the one hour, wicks. When you see price movement on the one hour and you see multiple wicks, big wick, big wick. What does this tell you? Like this tells you when we hit 544, buyers are slamming in and they're diving in, okay? We're option traders, so we're following the flow of the stock movement, but you have to think as people who are buying this stock as well, like, you know, maybe they're trading it short term, whatever it is, but like this tells you, hey, there are some serious buyers at 544 um, last Thursday, maybe that wherever that was. We sold down, people made profit on puts, but within that hourly candle, look at that big buyback. That should tell you when you see stuff like this on the one hour and the 34 hour, those are the lines you want to mark. Okay, one more. Um, 543.50, I took some notes just for speed of the class. Another one down here. Why I picked it, this low zone from last week, you guys. Again, we're on the one hour chart. We see a break last week, a small dip, and that dip got bought up, boom, pushed up. Buyers again, we sell through. Again, that one hour candle started down here, or not started, but was down here at, at one moment. Big buyers, okay? Um, Friday, sell down again. Buyers brought it back up. Midday, buyers again. You guys get the point, okay? So it's the one hour chart. We built a trade plan. Now, again, this is zero DT. And look at you guys, look how those lines line up. Okay, so start in the larger time frames to find the big moves so you can find key areas of interest. I always say that key areas of interest, uh, yes, key areas of consolidation. Very good, very good. Okay, so we're trading at today, we're kind of consolidating. I'm trading at 543.60. 543.60. So to me, I'm going to grab the 544, zero DTE. And so this candle here, this big candle here, is this, this is the price of that entry, okay? So here's the mindset of a scalper's mindset and how to do this um, and, and how your mindset should change for a stop loss and, and taking profit, okay? So I'm entering or I'm interested on this consolidation on this balance because I know this previous level here, uh, I was in 1K's class and he said 543.60. You know, let's pretend this is tomorrow. We're chopping around here. You take your entry at the bottom. Remember, you never buy the top of a breakout candle. You buy the bottom at support. You know, people are selling their puts profit at support. You want to buy calls at support, calls when they're on sell. Does that make sense? Calls at support. So over here is the value of the options chart. So when SPY goes up, the value of this 540, uh, yes, 544 call is going to go up as well. When SPY goes down, the price of SPY, my option chart is going to lose value, okay? So I'm going to try and line this up best I can just to show you guys why we're doing this, why this makes sense. Hopefully, this is a real light bulb moment for some beginners. Okay, so our blue line here is the value of the 544 at 815 my time. And it lines up with this support line here. So we can see this. And you're going to see why I'm doing this and how I'm doing this. Okay. So I want to enter here. Now I need to find a stop loss that makes sense. Okay. So to me, the stop loss that makes sense, the most sense is not to sound cocky, but it sounds or it seems pretty obvious to me. I'm interested in those recent wicks right there. So we will shade this red because that is a stop. And if it triggers, that means it's a loss. So for me, this is a fairly easy trade. Obviously it's in hindsight, but if I'm interested in this trade here, I'm looking and I'm saying, hey, this is my stop. I'm not entering here and going, hey, if we go to low a day, I'm gonna find out what the percent is and then I'll figure it out. Like you, you never, you never wanna just figure it out on the fly. You know, you need to have a plan as well. And so the first thing I do, is I draw, I will draw this line on the chart. If like, if I seen this consolidation here for five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, I have 20 minutes to figure out a trade plan here and here's how I do it. So I'm gonna draw my line because it's the value of the contract again. 
And what I do, guys, it's it's kind of simple, um, but I draw a line and I use this. So you can see, this is telling me right here, if you look right here, this is telling me my percent loss. If I enter at 62, $62 on this 544, this tells me my percent loss, okay? So I know, like we said, if I'm if I'm coming down to these wicks right here, let's say 543, 52-ish, so I'm risking, you know, let's just say a 10 cent drop on SPY, 10 cent, okay? So again, I grab, I'm, I'm using the options chart and let's see, this is a good trade, a good reasonable stop. Look at that stop loss, you guys. I'm risking six and a half percent. Risking six and a half percent. That's a pretty good start, right? We have all this, again, we have all this consolidation here. Um, Why did I lose my line there? There we go. We have all this consolidation here and support. Okay, we're buying support. We build a trade plan and we're saying, you know what? My stop out, if that wicks me down, it's about seven and a half percent. Okay, so let's let's loosen a little bit. Let's just say 10%, okay? So if you're saying yourself a 10% stop, okay, now where do I take profit? Okay, part two, where do I take profit? Okay. Now, here's where um, was Adam and other people probably, where do I take profit? How do I take profit? I'm not taking profit based on percent, never, ever, ever. I'm immediately looking. I have this line here that we draw from the one hour and I have this zone here. Let's draw another zone here. Um, I'm gonna draw it like this, okay? To me again, I didn't take the trade, but this would be a fairly easy trade to take. You enter here. And we have seven o'clock until, well, let's call it 8.15. You have one hour consolidation here. One hour consolidation. It did not, it attempted to break out, kind of, sort of, ultimately got smacked down, okay? So you need to ask yourself, where is the obvious spot that if we push, you know, you have to think, okay, duh, where are, where are we probably gonna find sellers at? Look at these wicks here. So this candle is a down candle. This candle here started here, pushed up and bears, sellers smacked it down and it closed down here. Same thing, candle started here. Oh, breakout, breakout, nope, push down, sold down, brought it back up. Same thing, you guys get the point. Push up, failed breakout, push up, failed breakout. Okay, you guys have to look and make trades that make sense and stop out where it makes sense, okay? So again, we entered here. I'm now looking, okay, what is the price of this contract roughly at 544, okay? Now I'm using, I already have the line drawn here to speed up the lecture. So this, I'm gonna move this arrow to, so this is our entry guys here. And now we're gonna focus on this candle here. And this candle on the five minute time frame is that 745 candle, okay? So again, we entered here. I'm gonna find my 745 candle. It's this one, okay? So I know that sometime during this, obviously decay is going to vary a little bit. I'll show you guys that and prove it. But decay will vary a little bit. But at last hour at 745, the, the top right here at 544, this candle, you can see decay, a little bit of slippage, was roughly 85 bucks. Okay, this is the option value. So what I will do is I'll enter here at 62, and I'm going to put a limit order sell at $85. Okay? because that makes sense, it's the top of this zone here. And say I'm, in, say I'm in 10, okay, I hit the trade perfect, I caught this huge candle, huge one five minute candle here. I'm selling eight to 10, and then what am I doing? I'm moving stops down here, stops at entry, okay? And that's how you hear these people get those big runners, letting the runners run. I see a comment tonight, um, can you talk about how to leave runners, stuff like that? This is how you do it, you guys. You build a trade plan, you have a smaller stop, than your, than your profit target. So again, what do we say? I'm risking 10%, 10%, you guys. Husky, you got an open mic, I don't know if you want to, but a question about each, if not Husky, your mic's open. 10% stop right now, 10% stop. And what's our profit? 35, 37%, you guys. Is that a good trade? Yes or yes? Obviously the answer is yes. And so this is how you guys, you build risk reward trades. Again, this is from a scalping mindset based on the chart here, okay? And going back to our mindset of how do I find profit targets, 
I'm not entering this scalp here and going. I'm not entering here and going, hey, I'm looking for 546 today. That is un that is unrealistic. We have not traded 546 until yesterday's sell down. So there's no reason to get into this trade and go, I'm holding to 546. That is unrealistic. It's stupid. It's greedy. It's all the above. You do not enter here and just go, oh, yep, profit target up here. What you can do is you book profits. Like I said, say I was an eight of 10. I'm going to sell eight. I'm leaving two runners and say, Ignore this. Sorry, Hussie, got to meet you. Um, ignore this sell down. Say we just pushed, we pushed, we pushed, and you just keep trimming on the way up, whether you got five left. And then when we start pushing these price targets, you zoom out. Then you go, okay, wait, we're, we're at this level. One case of this, a big level. I'm down to one runner. Oh, man, I got a level up here. You talked about 546. That's when you start looking for this. But that is on runners after you sold and move stops. Does that make sense to everybody on a zero DT? trading mindset, use the option contract, value contract, and you literally, you literally line them up like this next to each other. And that's how you find, you know, or if you're like, hey, I entered this, I'm being foolish. Um, I entered it and, and the boss called me into a meeting. It's like, oh man, what do I do here? So it's like, okay, turn on your stops dummy, turn on a profit target up here and let it ride. Say you go to a meeting, your phone pings like, oh man, I sold all 10 contracts at uh, 85 bucks. Perfect. Cool. You're done. The worst thing you can do is enter here. Oh, the boss called me in a meeting and say, we don't see any of this. Say we get this move right here and you sell down. Well, let's look at that. So this low down here is this value here. So you entered at 62 with no stops like an idiot. And you're looking at 74% loss on who knows your position size. I mean, I, I poke fun, but knowing some of you guys, like you guys are probably 40% in your port. So 70% loss on 40% position size. You guys are hurting big time. Um, LT, um, I'm not super good on think or swim, but I can show you probably quickly. Um, let me see here. I make sure I'm sharing the screen correctly. Day trade. So this is my day trade setup. Um, this th this would be. Um, I tried to trade Disney today. Came within one penny of my profit target. That doesn't matter. But um, send me a DM and I'll go over it. Um, I, I moved over to Thinkorswim recently and I don't I don't have a quick answer for you. There's probably a lot smarter people here on Thinkorswim, but this is the option value chart. And that's kind of the reason I'm, I'm on um, uh, Weeble tonight because I'm a lot faster with it, but send me a DM. Uh, my DM is start with 1K or that's my name. And we can go over this and how to bring it up, but there's probably some smart people in the chat too that can help you quicker. Um, I just don't wanna lose too much time on that, but um, there is definitely a way Think or swim, Weeble, um, probably Trading View. I just don't think Robinhood does it, um, but I will definitely get back to you or refer you to somebody else who can do it. All right, guys. Um, now let's think day trading mindset. Day trading mindset. So, okay, a day trade slash swing, short swing. Our mindset now will be I'm buying a little bit of time. Okay, guys. So, the next zone. I want to focus on is yesterday. So let me zoom out and build a trading plan for you guys. Again, I wasn't in this trade is hypothetical. Um, let me look at my notes here. Two days till entry 544 put. Okay. I think this is what I want. Yes. Okay. So again, pretend we are here yesterday, Thursday, and you just got done with lecture. And it's Thursday afternoon. You remember I said 544 is important, or 546, excuse me. Push up, reject, sell down, reject, bounce, attend to, attempt to break out, reject again. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. And Wednesday, fail breakout over 546. Okay, so 546 is your line in the sand. And you don't like zero DTEs because they move too fast, because you have a job, you can't watch it, whatever the case is. So we're on the one hour chart. We're going to build a game plan and how to do that, okay? So we're at 546. I know roughly a cut zone 
is this to me immediately kind of obviously the obvious thing this is and kind of should be you know this is my zone if i'm in puts i am wrong and again ignore this today we're going to focus and pretend that this is the day this is the price action okay so we noticed yesterday previous days we push up we failed the breakout failed the breakout so i'm looking again i'm looking at this it's midday how am i going to build a plan here again i'm interested in spy puts two to three, two to four days at a time. And how do I build a game plan? How do I build profit targets again? So kind of the same thesis now. So anything with a few days of time, weeklies, swings, stuff like that, I use the one hour zones that we drew here as my key areas of interest. Yes, you can take profit between 546 and 545.32, a 70, 75, 80 cent sell down. Yes, you can take profit there. But for me, again, when I'm buying time, I'm not staring at the five minute chart, looking at every one plus five, minus five, plus three, plus eight percent. I'm looking for key areas of interest to buy. Like if I'm buying time, it needs to make sense. Like for me, I'm not buying, everyone's different, but I'm not buying two weeks time on SPY to going back to the five minute to take this move here. That's just, just for me, I'm not going to say good use of money. Yes, you're buying time for insurance, but to me, I'm looking for key areas. I'm not. I'm not playing a forty cent move on spy. I'm looking for bigger moves that can possibly happen. Obviously, this in hindsight again, I can look at this. But again, okay, five forty six. I'm going to buy three days of time. I'm going to buy the five forty four put. So I need to make sure I got my date right. Six twenty four. Okay, so we're focusing on this here. Again, our red zone is our stop out. Let's go over to Thursday, yesterday. And again, we use that one hour to find our profit zones, but look at how it lines up on the five and why it makes sense. You know, Again, we can enter here and sell a VWAP. That's fine. Take, take all the profit you want. But again, your mindset, for those who've asked, should be larger time frame because you're looking for a larger move. You're not trading the chop with two weeks time looking for, you're, you're looking for something that could be, you know, I've seen this level here, 546 reject multiple times, okay? So this is 624, this low zone, because it's a put, when SPY goes up, the contract value goes down again. So I'm gonna draw a line just to kind of help you guys figure out where we're at. This line here, I won't be able to line it up because it'll be the opposite, but this line, the contract value yesterday, SPY was 118, $118. That's this zone here. So you can see we push up on SPY and that is my contract value. If I were in, say I got into puts here, that's my contract losing a bunch of money, okay? So we push up, fail to hold 546, fail to hold, fail to hold for, let's see, um, we'll just call it 745 to 940. For two hours, we are not breaking out, okay? So does it mean be blind to buy puts, but it should tell you, okay, Nobody's winning here, but also why are we rejecting? Okay, zoom out. I'm not I'm not just buying puts because it's a five minute time frame we're rejecting. I zoomed out and I know 546. Okay. So say we say we bottom tick. Again, let's build a trade plan. We enter here. I'm saying these wicks, these these morning wicks here. Again, we got time. This is the beauty of a killer close. guys of a killer entry. iPhone three, you got an open mic. You got a question, oh go ahead and answer it, but otherwise I'm gonna mute you. Um, the beauty of buying time here is you don't, okay, say you enter here, you don't care. I mean, you're, you're mindful, but these little moves here on a four day expiration or a week out, two weeks out spy puts, this does not bother you. If you're in puts here on zero DT, this bothers you because time decay. Okay. So look at this, you guys, let's move this up just to sell the point, I guess a little bit. Say we are at 120, okay? My red zone stop out, again, hopefully this is like a whoa moment for you guys, but I buy time. Look at my stop, you guys, 3%. 3% stop to be able to hold through. This probably isn't accurate. This is a morning push, maybe a little bit of IV, but even if I extend this a little bit, like you can hold through a 10 cent, 15 cent push on SPY because you bought time for insurance. And let's look at this move now, you guys. So look at. We're risking 
even if you say, okay, hard stop 30%, guys, 30% is way, way down here. Wherever that is, it'd, it'd have to go to probably 547 and a half, okay? So now let's find some profit targets, okay? I'm interested in this zone here, like I said. Let's say I got five. I got five contracts in a day. Let's look at this 10 o'clock candle here. Let's find that 10 o'clock candle. It's right here. So I'm just gonna keep drawing a line so you guys can follow the magic and see how this works, okay? I'm in five contracts. Boom, 23%. Again, I'm selling at a level because it makes sense. Also, why is this smart to sell here, you guys? Why is this smart? Let's look left. Look at this price action here. Morning sell down, hard bounce up. Morning sell down, another candle through, hard buy back up. You're damn right, I'm selling, I'm trimming here. Let's say I sold two, two of my five. Now what? 22%, then I let it go 20% red, no. 22% profit, now I move my stop loss up. Okay, we entered at 120, I sold two at 148. Now stops are minimum, at a minimum, my stop loss are at 120, okay? And we come down here, that might've been a news candle, it's right around 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock my time, which is one o'clock market hours, okay? We sell two, we come down here and we get lucky. So we have three lines drawn here, we get five minute consolidation, we get this big kill candle here, okay? Now what? It didn't hit my profit target, so I can either get excited and take profits or at the minimum, what do I do now, you guys? I'll answer it for you. 543.42 was where I took profit. Now, so I had three remaining, so I sold two, stop was here. Now we get this kill count, now what do we do? Our stop loss is moved to this zone here, which was 148. So now, this is how you do not lose on a trade. This is how people in the, in the comments say, how do I leave runners? This is it, you guys. When you're, per, when you're properly positioned sized and you're not yellowing, you're not in super heavy and you're not doing dumb shit and you guys have time and you charted it out. When you chart it out, this, this feels great to hit a trade like this. This is a kick-ass trade to hit. How much are we up now? 120, 120 entry. You're now at 59%. You have four days of time. You trimmed. At a minimum, you can take profits here. But let's look at this next candle here. Next candle. I should have left this up. Sorry. So now profit target two. I'm selling at 200. Okay. Seems obvious. I can look at this after the fact. But guys, this is how you make money day after day, week after week. So now I sold two more out of my five. So now I'm down to one. Okay. So you can either take 60% profits, you know, clean slate for the day, get out through the day, go walk your dog, go for a walk, go for a run, get your work done, whatever it is. You just took a huge trade and you sold for huge gains. Or now, how do I leave runners? How do I leave runners? I sold two. I sold two. Now I have a runner. Now what do we do? Bare minimum, that stop comes back up to 148. Bare minimum, because that stop is this was support, now resistance. So if we bounce... You have to expect, you know, our seller's going to reject it here, our buyer's going to buy it up, okay? And now you just let it ride. This is your runner. Obviously, it's in hindsight. We sell down. Okay, profit target three. I'm interested in this 1035 candle. We are doing great. Boom. So this line here is the value of the SPY 544, three days till expiration when it hits down here. So you guys, that is 84% gains on something that expires in three days, low risk. If you wanna find out risk reward, there's a thing on uh, Weeble, I'm sure TOS can do it. Look at that risk reward, you guys. Ignore the numbers on the side, this is we both tell me, hey, if I want to buy X number of shares, but just look at this ratio here, 11.2. So when you hear people talk about risk reward, risk reward, what, what is risk reward? It's like, I'm risking this tiny bit of money. I'm risking, oops, $9 on the contract, $10, whatever you want, 8%. What do we say? 10%. I'm risking $12 from $120, $120 entry. You know, so I would stop out at, 
108, quick math, I'm not smart, 108. And this is my reward, you guys. So, and again, over here, uh, short position, you enter here. And this would be the equivalent of drawing out your risk reward to visualize it. Again, I said my stop is over this red zone. This number is different because this is the price of SPY, the value. But again, this green reward zone is how this correlates to SPY puts, you guys. This is how you make kick-ass trades, big money. This is how you trim. This is how you build a trade plan. Um, it's very similar for longer swings. Again, I'm not entering here based on the five-minute and buying time and, and saying, hey, I, I want to sell down here. Notice I never said, hey, I'm selling 80%. I don't know what this is down here, but I know it's big money. And I know the stop out here is a little bit of money based on that. But I'm risking one to roughly eight reward. Like that's how it's done, you guys. Obviously, this is a hindsight trade, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to walk you guys through one trade of mine, not because I'm bragging, but just to show you real life, how I do it, how I plan a trade, how I, I tell others I'm in the trade. Sorry, wrong chart. I think I want full screen. One hour. Um, let me look at my notes here. All right. Let's take a look at a trade plan I built. I sent this to a couple other people. Oxy, 62 put. Um, I took this on Thursday um, and this is this is my trade plan right in front of me. And this is my trade plan I told somebody else. And so again, I DM people when I'm in trades because this tells me, you know, I, I always tell people, you hear my lectures, tell someone your trade plan, pretend you're an analyst or you're a mod in this group, pretend you're a green name, you know, pretend you're you're alerting this trade and you, ha you, ha you have to have a trade plan. They have to have a trade plan if you're alerting trades for an entire community. So that's what I do. I message people and I tell them my trade plan because I stick to it. And if it goes against me, they'll probably message me, hey, did you stop out? And I'll say, yep. Or, hey, are you still in? And, you know, this is my answer. So, okay, scaling in, I'm going to read to you guys in case you can't read it. Scaling in, partial entry, oxy, 62 puts. Next week's expiration, safer and ideal entry is above my alert, 6237. I'm willing to hold. So this is my trade plan right in front of you. I'm willing to hold through 6250 VWAP. That is my stop loss over that as a cut. Price targets, look at I have three listed. 6214, 62, and the daily 200 moving average. Okay. Oxy, Thursday. This is going to hurt to look at because it freaking dumped, but I stuck to a trade plan, so I don't care. So this is this day we're going to focus on. Man, that thing moved. So to speed things up, I already had it charted out. I knew... I knew this level mentioned what I say, VWAP 6250, I think I said. So this is the one hour chart. We come, we pre-market, a little bit pre-market action, you guys. Um, we come down, we push up, we reject hard. This is a one hour candle. This is one hour of bulls not making any progress, okay? So if you know my trades, my trade plan, I always, I always buy break and retest, break down and retest, break down and retest is my trade plan, break down and retest. Okay. So this area of interest is why I liked it, why I put it. So big rejection here. And again, this is kind of the key area from the previous day. Let's pretend this was today. This is the key area. This is one hour chart. Let's go to five. Probably now have to. Scroll back like this, sorry. Uh, is this my day? Yes. Okay, so we're now in the five minute time frame, and I'm just showing you guys my trade plan. I entered somewhere in here and I said, what did I say? Pulling through 62.50 is my cut, price target 62.14, 62 flat, 200, all right. So, 62.14 was the low of the day, okay? That's probably obvious why I had that price target there. So if you enter here, my first price target is not down here. My, my first price target for me is always the low of the day, the pre-market low, yesterday's low, whatever it is. If I'm coming down 
I am always, always, always selling to low of the day. Because look at, you got to expect low of the day. Also, that was on SPY. Lower of the day, that's where SPY stepped in today. Everyone's buying uh, puts at pre-market low. And that thing shot up today. Anyone's trading SPY. So Oxy entered here. First price target. Boom. 10% trade here. Price target one, take it or leave it. Move stops minimum, 14%. So this is me just talking about my trade plan in real time. 62 hits, 65 can fill, okay? So didn't sell here. Come down, what did I say? 62 flat. Lots of weakness on XLE this day, last uh, Thursday, I think it was, energy sector. I think it was energy sector. Maybe just this name was getting absolutely smoked. It gave me confidence to hold this trade. Price target two here. And look, at, I, I have no problem. I tell people my position size, I don't care. I'm doing a small port challenge. I do this for transparency. I do this to hold myself accountable. Price target two is here. I'm selling eight of my 10 of my half position size. So I was never in full, but that's okay. The trade went the way I wanted. So selling eight of my 10, okay? Trim runners, move, stop. Trim runners, move, stop, okay? And now here, price target three, 200 daily moving average. That is this yellow right here is the daily moving average, 200 daily um, on a daily time frame. This is intraday where it's at. And I knew if it's going to bounce, it's going to bounce to the 200 daily. And so this price target three, obviously it went for way, way more, but that's life. I stuck to the trade plan. I called out the trade plan. Oxy fully out here, price target three, happy with trades, no regrets, but goes more. Well, I lied. I did have regrets, but you guys get the point. It is building a trade plan and sticking to it. You know, I don't, I don't send somebody this trade plan and go, ah, uh, yeah, I, I know I said 6250, but I'm gonna hold up to 64. No, you don't do that. You know, you you stick to it. And then when you do, it is, it is, there, there's no stress, you guys, on stuff like this. Because here's a few reasons why there's no stress in this trade. If it went against me, my stop loss was actually, I can probably pull this up. I took, it would be this week now, 62. Um, yep, that was that day. That's easy to tell where that's at. One second, let me forget when I entered. 755-ish. Sorry guys, trying to figure this out on the fly. So I entered right here. Let me go Oxy real quick. Just to show you guys risk reward, all that jazz. Oh, wait, right here. So I entered at the time. So I had seven, eight, nine days expiration. I knew this chop zone here was my stop out. Because to me, a little bit of a bear flag, whatever you want to call it. If we break up over, I'm like, you know what? We're back over VWAP. You know, we're back probably clear in pre-market zone. I'm probably wrong. And we might reverse and push up. So the stop out zone is small. Again, 6250-ish. So that wick here on the five minute. Is right here. I was risking 9%, you guys, 9% trade, 9% risk on whatever it ended up profiting. Obviously it went huge, but um, so again, you guys, that's a real life trade. You know, it's not about the money. It's nice when you win, but it's about a trade plan. Anybody have any questions? I've been rambling. I've been trying to look at the chat. Uh, let me go up. Johnny, so would you recommend starting the four hour, uh, starting the four, I think you mean four hour, four, is that what you mean, Johnny? Four hour than one hour? Yeah, if that's what you mean. Yes, okay, very good question. I always, 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 and like, man, shout out to Tilio. He would always be, you know, I would ask him about trades. I mean, I still do, but even back in the day, early, early in my career. I'd, I'd be like, hey, what do, you, what do you think here? And he'd be like, the hourly this or the hourly that. And I'm like, the hourly, dude. I'm like, I'm, like I'm, on, I'm on the five minute. And it never made sense to me until I finally, finally, finally started doing this, you know, probably 
at least two years ago. Charting and building a game plan on the one hour, just like to me, you guys, it just makes so much sense because you can find you can find these areas. This 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 is just the market flow. Like as 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 the ocean goes, like this is just the market doing its thing, and you want to find those key areas. You know, you don't want to be buying puts at 59.38. When you look left, like, oh, bounce, bounce zone, bounce zone. It's like bounce. Why am I buying puts here? Okay. And so, Johnny, to answer your question, always, 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 man, start start a larger time frame. You don't have to trade on it. Like if you're scalping, yes, don't don't be on the one hour. You need to see intricate levels, but like always build a trade plan, brother, on a larger time frame. And again, shout out to Tilio. Like it just it makes so much sense now. And it's like, duh. It's like you know, I'm asking him about, you know, puts here on this five minute candle. And he's telling me, wait a minute, this one hour, this is an example, this one hour looks really strong. And to me, I'd be like, okay, the one hour, I, you know, I don't care, but like, it makes sense. You guys for one hour, the, the bears could not sell below 59.40, 59.38. So I should tell you for an entire hour, the bears made no progress. Okay. Do not short the market with your five puts that does nothing to oxy big money does not give a shit about your few contracts. Follow the momentum, you guys. Do not just take puts because you think something is up too much. Like follow the flow, follow time and sales, follow the momentum, you guys. Um, TOS stops me out all the time. Man who says spreads. Yeah, Gail, you have to, um, you'll have to be more descriptive. If it is, um, if it's spy, I mean the, the spreads, the spreads are tight. The spreads are, I mean, market's closed. They're gonna widen out now, but um, let me take a drink. Spy spreads are one dollar, like meaning markets are closed, they're probably <clears throat> wider, but so 154, 153. So the spread, yes, is one dollar, 154 to 153. Obviously, you pay stuff. We said Oxy, you know, two dollar spread. PayPal, um, two dollar spread. So, pay attention to the spreads. Yes, um, but again, as long as the spreads are not super wide, something like SMCI, you can. What I, what I do, you guys are another thing I forgot to mention. If if you cannot, you know, stay glued to the charts, like if you enter here or say you follow me on this trade. And you're like, okay, one one case says 6214, 62 flat, and whatever the other level was, just do this on whatever you have. Robinhood, they, they better have alerts set alerts. And I said 62 flat and alert at 62. And you literally, and then of course a stop out alert. You should have a stop loss set, not an alert. You're not waiting for a bell to tell you where to sell. You need to have that set. But again. If you're in this trade, say, take this trade with me. It's a week time and shit, your boss called you into a meeting. Turn on that stop. And at the very minimum, say you got out or say you're on your lunch break, you know, you're in the break room. Oh, 62.15 just triggered. Okay, let me check the charts. Oh, I'm a nice profit sell. An hour later, oh, 62 triggered. Okay, set alerts, you guys. Like if you don't want to stare in front of charts, like if it is nauseating to you or it bugs you or whatever, like set alerts and just wait for them to trigger. That's why I do day to day on my watch list. There are 28 things. I don't trade them all. But there's a variety of 28 things. I don't have 28 mini charts open. I'm literally just setting alerts and I wait for them to trigger. So I set a top alert, a down alert, and I wait for them to trigger. And I say, oh, okay, cool. And I tell someone, hey, I like this setup or whatever. Um, so regarding this lecture and anything, does anybody have? Does anybody struggle with taking profit, stop losses? They don't know how. Um, did I go over everything too fast? Does anybody have an example they want to go over? Um, does anybody want to be brave on maybe a loss they took? We can talk about it. Maybe I can maybe show how I would have done it different. Anybody? If not, we got five minutes of training psychology because you know I end every class with that. But anybody at all? Anybody, anybody took a losing? All right, let's go over this. Your girl says, I took 5.44 today, got X hundred set, they want, okay. Well, like I said, I'm glad you made money, but you gotta chart, you gotta chart it out. Um, okay, 
Well, what what time? So I don't know what um, time zone you're in. You took a five forty four. Um, what time of day did you enter? Just so we can kind of maybe look at the chart together, regardless if you didn't chart it out. Central time, whenever they're 0.25. All right. So you're in a 544. Why is that? Nope, that is not a zero TT. There we go. 544. Oh, we already went over this. Oh, did you bottom tick? Now you have regrets. Oh man, see, this will be this will be fun to go over. What the hell? You got the bottom. Now be honest. What was your stop loss? What what uh what number? Did you have a stop loss? Be brave. I don't know what your Discord name is. So what was your percent stop? What was your stop out point? Because they bought down here, you guys, somewhere down here. So this is the spy chart of the 544. My stop was gonna be 0.15 because we had four cons, okay. So two four to one five, they were gonna risk, okay, 40%. I don't like a random, num I don't know if it's random, I don't wanna call them out, but, um, Okay, we can have some fun with it because you sold too early, but that's all right because we all do. So again, going back to the trade plan, um, some good things, um, you bought the bottom. I'm hopefully and hopefully assuming you bought the bottom because you've seen this here, you've seen a balance and recovery, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I get wicked out, so wider stop, yep. And that's the thing, so that is, so um, their comment, um, assuming it's a girl, her comment, you know, that's, that's the, that's the, the risk you guys take when you guys trade something that if she entered here at 10, four, well, 10 45, my time, you know, that's two hours and 15 minutes until market closes. So the risk you're willing to take down here is I need to be right. And I need to be right really quick. I cannot hold through consolidation zone here for 30 minutes an hour and get a push up and then I'll be down. Like when you buy, Zero DDs back half a day, they need you need to be right really quick. Okay. And so I guess building a trade plan, obviously it's hindsight, but um for me, if I'm buying somewhere in these candles, you know. So here's a couple things. If I'm buying here, knowing what I know, I would have this line charted out. So to me, I'm not gonna say it's a shit trade, but you you hear me say. If you're buying between two supports, you, you have to be willing to hold through this, okay? So if you bought it 2.4, you know, the low, let me figure out these candles really quick. I think I have this wrong for this example. So, so this line here, I think at 0.34 is where this was here, this little bit of consolidation. I think that makes sense to everybody. Okay, so my point is, if you buy between, so there's a support here, there's a support not far below. So to me, if you're just saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to have a wide stop, you have to tell yourself, okay, I'm willing to hold to this support and see what it does. So if you entered here, you're probably sweating it out for 10 minutes because we sold down. You're going, oh, shit. Am I down? That's a 42% loss. And so my point is, when you enter in between two levels, it's like you either have a tight stop and have a bounce and go, okay, relief and see a big buyback and go, shit, well, why did I sell? Or, you know, it, it's not good trading, but you have to say, okay, I need to see where this holds here because it's like you're buying here. Maybe, maybe you take a tight stop, but you can't have a stop all the way down here. Then a few minutes before this, you sell, but hey, one case that it's a huge level on the one hour. It's like, well, you can't decide to hold 38% and then sell. It's like, well, you hold two more percent. Like, I mean, why not? Like if you didn't have a trade plan and that's what against you 38%, well, what's two more percent? Because now there's a, there's a support here. So my point is if it's between two zones, you guys, it has to make sense. Okay. Obviously it's a hindsight. I can, I can say that, look at that, but that is my mindset when I see a trade here 
within this pocket, you know? And the beauty is, say we had a couple of days to expiration. Say, okay, we sold down today, down there, pre-market low. 1K says that's a good level. We're at 543. I'm going to take some 544, two days of expiration on the five minute, 10 o'clock, 1040. Is that it? Am I the right thing? Why is that not lined up? Sell down. That's not making sense. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to look at this in real time. Um, 544. Oh my God, am I on the wrong day? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Holy shit. Sorry, part of my French. <laughs> oh my God. I've been trying to talk about something from two days later. All right. Coming back, coming back down. Um, sorry, your girl. I'm way behind on what we were just talking about. Let's just pretend what I was trying to talk about was right here. Man, I'm stupid. All right. Let's say this was the contract. You sell down support. You gotta you gotta be willing to hold to see what this price action is here on the support. You know, we talked about, you know, this is a big level here. This is look at this is yesterday's close zone. You're damn right. I'm gonna try calls down here. Okay. So you enter here, you enter at a little bit of time. So say you did not take had to meet you. Um, you enter down here. Big buyback, you didn't take your profit. That's fine. Okay. You got to watch this zone here and say, okay, this is yesterday's low, was it? Yes. And yesterday's close. To me, this is a dumb, easy trade to try and take. But this is where you can't have like a super, super tiny, tiny, tight stop and, and get wicked out. So let's figure out what this would be on a zero DT and a one DT. So 542.53. We want a 533 because we're smart. We're not going super far out of the money. Um, or wait, is this the one you actually took a 544? Okay. So down in this low zone here is 19. Okay. So you bottom take this zone here and you're risking, say, you know, you're, you're risking nothing down here. I mean, on a 544, the percent is big, but dollar-wise, it's nothing. And so my point is, you guys, have a zone that makes sense, that is a dumb, easy trade. And man, that hurts that you sold at, if I'm talking about the same contract, I'm not an idiot. Yeah, that's a good trade. But again, uh, your girl, have a trade plan, have something charted out. If you're not good at charting, um, send me a DM. Um, but for anyone listening, like, if you just say, hey, what do you have for SPY levels? And you ask me that every single day. It's like, well, my levels from the last five days are not really changing. And so if you ask me for levels, I expect you to put them on your chart and chart with them. You know, don't, don't be afraid to ask for levels, you know, but like if you're just like, say, hey, SPY calls here. I'm like, well, okay, what's your trade plan? Well, I make you build a trade plan and follow it. If you're going to ask me for advice, I can't just say, oh, yeah, SPY calls here, trim here, 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 here. And then every day you ask me, okay, SPY puts here. Yeah. Okay. What, what are your, what are your profit targets? Like. That does nothing for you. Um, you guys need to learn um, little by little and trade on your own. But like I said, if you send me a chart and say, hey, I'm thinking about spike calls here. What do you think? Um, my stop would be here. My profits would be up here. I'd be like, perfect. Now stick to the plan. Okay. Quickly, you guys. I know we're running long. We're halfway through the year pretty much. This is your weekly motivation. There's 131 days left, trading days, not calendar days, but trading days. 131 days left in the year, you guys. Okay, make them count. If I have $1,000 today, what percent of my portfolio do I need to average to get 3,600 by the end of the year? No cheating, no calculators. 
that's a pretty big percent. I probably need to get. So what are your guys' guesses? Let me know in the chat. Or if I want to turn a thousand into forty eight hundred. Someone tell me in the chat what you think a percent, you know, what my percent would be. Because these are big numbers. I probably need like huge percent gains every day. Anybody in the chat? Anybody? Just train psychology real life for you guys. What percent would I need? Everybody sleeping? iPhone says 3% on which which one of these do you think? Which one iPhone? First one or second one? Since nobody else is guessing. Come on, guys. I think this is fun. 3% on the first. You are wrong. Thousand dollars in a 3680 is 1% a day, you guys. 1% a day. I know you're not going to have every single green day in the year. But why are you not sticking to the plan? Okay, I know it's not a trained psychology class, but I got to end with this. And so we see this all the time. I even say it. One to three percent a day is a goal. One percent, one percent, one percent, one percent. One percent a day, you guys, from now until December 30th, whenever the last train day is, is 3600 bucks. So you guys that are posting gangs, I, I peek at you in the in the gains tab. I see you're up 17% a day, 13% a day, 20% a day. It's like you can be up 22% a day on a small port, but then you go red 40%. You know, you get 3% a day, 3% a day, 3% a day, and then you have a red day, you know, you're down 23%. So you wipe out three days of gains. You know, you say this is this is my goal, this is what I want to do but you don't follow it. This is 1% a day, you guys. And again, say your quota or say your goal is 1% a day and you, you close out the day 22%. So, so what you, I mean, obviously the compound will change daily, but it's like you basically did 22 train days of work and obviously 1% on a, like I said, it would change, but you get my point. It's like, when you guys are up huge on the day or on the week. It's like, I get the DMs not all the time, but sometimes it's, Man, I took some bad trades today, Friday, zero DTs, and I wiped out four days worth of gains or six days worth of gains. It's like, that is crazy, you guys. Like 3% a day today, you can make 48K, 47K basically profit. So like you guys talk this, but why do you guys not do this? Why do you guys not do this? I don't get it. Okay. One thing that I do, it helps me a lot. I built this a screenshot from my trading journal on that challenge port. I built a thing or not a thing, a formula that every day I check in. So this formula is populated from my trading journal of the portfolio, um, the balance. And what I did is I said, what is 10% entry size? What is 5%? What is 3%? And here's a cool little thing that I kind of figured out kind of what I do. Okay. So I immediately, I start the day, I go, okay, tomorrow, I got 10235 bucks in the port. Um, I'm up nice on the week. Right now, I've taken five trades. I stopped out of two, and I profited on three. So I'm up nice. So maybe I want to take some risks tomorrow. So first thing I do, you guys, 10% position size. I immediately do this. I go, okay, 10% of 10K is 1000 bucks. I mean, I literally do this every single day, 1024. And I want to get some Bank of America contracts and they're 40 bucks each. So I go 10, 24, do I have, oops, 24, and they're 40 bucks a piece. I can buy 25 contracts on a 10 and boom, I know my position size is perfect. There's no guessing, there's no cheating it. And I do this every single time. Okay, so I'm in 25, so let's say I'm in 25 contracts, okay? We all say, oh, I'm just going to sell 20% profit, 25%. Okay. So what is on a $1,000 position size, you guys, what is 20% profit? 200 bucks. What is 25%? 250. You get the point. But here's the beauty. So I keep, I tell myself, I tell everybody, you know, all you need is 1% a day. All you need is 2%. Okay. So what, what is 1% a day of this number? 102 bucks. So you see where this is going. One trade 
20% profit. How easy, not easy, but how often do you see 20% trades a day? I sell everything for 205 bucks. Look at, I'm now at 2% a day on one trade, you guys. This is the power and the beauty of position sizing, why you have to do this every single time. There are no cheat codes. You know, you may, you know, your port might be up 100% in a week. That's cool. But eventually, it's going to bite you and it's going to hurt because you're going to be in heavy. You're going to be in 40, 50, 60%. You've seen that slide last week. You take 75% of your port and you're like, okay, hard stop, 30%. Well, now 30% loss is way more than 3%. Okay. And on the flip side, you guys, say you're not good with levels, but you're good with position sizing. Okay. So I'm in 10% position size. I want a hard stop of 30%. Well, let's look for 30% is. 3%. Yeah, 3% loss in the day is not fun. But you can you can come back from this during the day because you only use you only use 10% of your positions. You still got 90% of your portfolio left. Like when I see the gains tab, it's like, oh, I'm up 20%, 22% the day. And I look at your buying power and it says 0 0.35. You got 35 cents left on the day. So maybe you trade a lot and made 20%. That's fine. Or maybe you full ported and you went deep red 40% and now you're up 22% a day and you're cheering that on. So that is not good position sizing, you guys. But if you can build just a stupid, dumb formula like I have and have this in front of you, because now when I'm in a trade, I don't have to come back to this. Like in the back of my head, you guys, I know if, I'm, if I have a 10% position size, I know if I hit between 20%, 30% of that trade, which obviously you guys see my profit targets, you know, my first profit target, I'd like to be 20%. I know that's a 2% day. And that is a huge confidence boost when I can hit a trade like that. Or say you want to take on less risk, say maybe you took a couple losses, but you really like this trade and you want to, you want to get in it. Okay. Lower your position size. 5% 5% of 10 K is 500 bucks. Okay. So I go $512. I want to get in. Bank of America puts and they're 40 bucks. I'm going to get 12.8. So I'm going to size down and get 12 contracts. I literally have this calculator open every single day and that's how I do it. Okay, you take 20%. Not bad. Oh, it's only half position size. Like on Oxy, half position size, but guess what? 20%, 1% a day on the portfolio. As long as you secure, you know, you have to sell it to profit. But guys, this is how this adds up. This, this, is, this is how you do it. But the key is if you, you know, if you're if you're not super good at trading and you and you take more losses than maybe you would like, you gotta keep them small because you gotta you gotta stay floating. You gotta tread water, so to speak, in the market. You gotta stay alive. But if you go heavy, 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 and I see people saying, Oh, I only got a hundred dollars of ten thousand left, or why as well just blow it? It's like, well, it's a horrible mindset. And it's a losing mindset, and you're never gonna get ahead. Okay. The calculator site is where I got this, okay? The calculator site. You guys do whatever you want. I don't care how much money you have. So you have 10K. We already went over that. So you got 5K. 131 days left. 18 grand. Oh, another thing, I almost forgot. All right, this is probably my favorite part. And the most psychological part let me go back to this let's take a look here this is what not makes me laugh but makes me shake my head so i seen we're not going to call them out but they publicly posted so whatever if you guys want to go back and look at it so they had a smaller portfolio they're kind of having trouble on trade floor and you know we mentioned the comment one to three percent a day LOL, I'm not, I'm not going to take 10 bucks. That's stupid. Guess what, you guys? 1%, if you, if you want to stick to the plan and the goal, because you've seen how much money that can be, you know, potentially. We've seen, I said, 3%, what that can do. December 31st, this could, this could be real life. But yet, you guys don't want to do it because you think $10 is stupid. Okay? Yeah. It is not a lot, but it, it is 1%, okay? But now let's look, you know, we want to end the week green. Let's look how this stacks up and how quickly it stacks up, okay? So 
today or this week, you know, you closed up 51 bucks on the week. That's fine. But look how it starts stacking and adding later in the week, later on. Ignore this because this is not, this is thinking it's a calendar day. We're going by trading days. There's 131 days left of trading. So at the end of the year, towards the end of the year, you're having $250 weeks. 250 bucks, okay? Some more psychology. 3% a day. You're a good trader. You're consistently getting 3% a day. Again, 3% this week. Or three percent of the day this week, oh, I only made thirty bucks. That's that's nothing. That's not much. Okay, it's not much. Look at this weekly compound, you guys. Look at this. June thirtieth. Two months from now, assuming you're a good trader and you're averaging, just this is an average now. Two months from now, you can be pulling in another nine hundred a week, and you start with a thousand dollar port. In two months, if you're a good trader and you average percent, remember it's the psych psychological part of it, not the money, you can pull in 900 bucks a week. What is that? Pay your rent, part of your rent. You can make rent money, car payment money, child support money, going out money, whatever it is. Like, look at this. Look how this compounds, you guys. Towards the end of the year, this is big money. Like, this is a lot of money. But again, you guys... If you're position sizing properly, you should be okay. Because another thing this does, you guys, sticking to this plan of position sizing and percent wins and all that, you know, like this builds you mental toughness for this. Like you cannot start out with 48K in your port. And if you're down 9K, you know, it's not fun. No one, no one wants to lose that in a week. But this is the mindset that builds for you guys, okay? So, I mean, and to this point, when you start racking up like 9K a week, then when it comes back to this, you can size way, 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 way down. Like if you have a part-time job or full-time job and you're still trained, you know, I mean, 9K a week is great, but it's like, that's where you can position size way small, you guys, and take on way less risk because, you know, you don't quote unquote need to hit these goals because it's like, man, you are, you are banking now. So you can take small position sizes and still make really good money. Daily compound towards the end of this. Look at $1,400 days. That is life changing, you guys. And again, look at nobody wants to do this. They want to do this. They want, they want $1,400 days now. But when I show them this, let's go back up. They don't want 30 bucks a day. Why is that? Like, why is this boring, but it's 3%? And it teaches you discipline, but you want this. And so that's, that's the mental side trading. That's what I'm gonna wrap with you guys is, you guys try and skip the steps to riches or wealth or whatever it is. Like you cannot skip steps, but I promise you, if you follow the plan, do stuff like this, like, it is, it is literally life-changing. And when that light bulb moment goes off and you start stacking weeks like this, and I have a couple people, you know, they're they're doing okay. They're sending me screenshots and it's like, dude, this is this is crazy. I'm like, yes, you see, like when you when you do stuff like this, this is this is how you build wealth, but you cannot skip steps, you guys. Like you guys are just super, super new to trading and you expect to be good. It's like, you know, Michael Jordan's not good overnight. You know, doctors are not good overnight. It takes time, you guys. Like, this is it. This is how you do it. Any questions? Yeah, Livin's definitely, yep. 3%, yep. 3%, yep. Any other question, guys? Anything at all? If not, I'm going to end the chat, but I'm not in a hurry. Got to break that down for you, a little bit of training psychology, but... um. You guys, yep, there's uh, three trading days left in this month. End it strong. End that month strong, you guys. But uh, let's have a great rest of the week. My DMs are always open if you guys need help. Um, send questions. Send me your trading plan, whatever it is. Send me your trading journal, you guys. You know, I don't care if it's loss after loss, but let's look over it together. You know, I don't need to know. You know, if you're, if you're sending me a trading journal, you might have to share some information, you know, about entry size and stuff like that. But you know, trading journal is not, it, it will not lie, you guys. Like, it's going to show you where you're taking losses and how big and why. 
And if you guys are fighting an uphill battle and not winning, you guys, you guys have to have a trading journal. If you're constantly losing, it, it's going to show you where your problems are. If you're playing SPX every day and you keep losing, keep losing, it's like, well, why? You know, that's the definition of insanity, right? Keep doing the same thing, expecting different results or same mistakes, whatever it is. It's like, build a trade plan, you guys. Build something that works. And Panada, oh, you're in your brother. Good to have you, man. All right, guys, with that, we are a little bit over as usual because I talk a lot. But have a great week, you guys. And, uh, yeah, shout out to you later.